Now for our top story tonight, which comes from Russia, where President Vladimir Putin claims that his country has developed a new cruise missile that is invincible. Those are his words. In his annual State of the Nation address in Moscow, the Russian president said that they've tested nuclear weapons, including a nuclear-powered cruise missile and a nuclear-powered underwater drone that will be immune to enemy intercept. Basically, what he's saying is that all the missile defense systems that America has installed all over the world will now be useless. They will not be able to stop the new Russian nukes. That's not all. Putin claims that these weapons can reach anywhere in the world. Their range is unlimited. Through a video presentation, Putin highlighted two nuclear-capable weapons, a cruise missile and a submarine-launched unmanned underwater vehicle or an underwater drone. Vladimir Putin said that the warhead was a low-flying cruise missile, which would be difficult to spot. It has a nuclear payload with a practically unlimited range and an unpredictable flight path. The weapon can bypass lines of interception and is invincible in the face of all existing and future systems of both missile defense and air defense. Throughout his speech, the Russian president made it clear that the focus of the new weapon system was America. He said Russia has acted in response to the U.S. withdrawing from the Treaty on Anti-Ballistic Weapons. He also said that any use of nuclear weapons against Russia or its allies would be considered an attack on Moscow. Joining us uh, this evening is our correspondent from Moscow, Julia Chapman. Uh, good evening, Julia. What we know about this weapon is what the Russian president has told the world. Is there any way to independently verify these claims and how powerful is, these, is this weapon? Um, no, we only really have President Putin's word, um, and he did talk about them at length with, uh, as you said, uh, video and animation descriptions. Uh, particularly interesting were these two weapons uh, that were nuclear capable, uh, the underwater drone that uh, had a nuclear capability, as well as the inter uh, in uh, excuse me, uh, international ballistic missile that could go anywhere in the world. Um, and he did uh, talk about these at length um, with these visual aids and did specifically speak about the, um, the West not being open to dialogue with Russia about nuclear capabilities um, and that he said this was a response to that and that any uh, threat to Russia's allies would indeed be seen as a threat to uh, Moscow itself and would be acted on accordingly with these weapons that have been in development. What's the immediate provocation for Russia to have developed and more importantly to have announced that it is, is in possession of such a weapon? What explains the hawkish tone that Vladimir Putin took today? Yeah, well, there's a couple of explanations for that. One, of course, is the timing. This speech was, in fact, moved back from December to today. Um, and that's quite significant because it comes just two and a half weeks before the presidential election. President Putin is, of course, expected widely to comfortably win his fourth term as Russia's president. But it doesn't hurt to uh, give a little bit of rhetoric ahead of that. And this was, in fact, one of the first times he'd really set out his stall ahead of the election. He hasn't been doing very much campaigning thus far. Um, he spent most of the first half of the speech talking about domestic economic issues and then uh, very quickly shifted tone to this uh, defense range that Russia has been developing. So the timing about uh, the ahead of the election is quite significant. Russians do tend to, uh, Russian voters tend to respond uh, fairly well to um, these kind of rhetoric, uh, this kind of rhetoric from Vladimir Putin ahead of elections. In fact, it was very well received um, amongst the audience uh, at the speech itself. He got standing ovations all round. Um, it was a very nationalistic kind of, um, you know, pro-Russia event, and he he did get a lot of good response from that. The other uh, timing uh, factor, of course, is that um, he's been responding to a lot of rhetoric from uh, the U.S. and from U.S. President um, Donald Trump who has been um, speaking a lot, of course, lately about uh, the U.S. nuclear uh, capabilities. Um, in fact, Putin addressed that specifically, saying he didn't like the tone that was coming out of the U.S., um, and, and he said that this was a direct result of that, this development. Julia Chapman, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining us here from Moscow this evening. Let's play out for our viewers what the Russian president had to say in that address today. Создание перспективного ракетного комплекса стратегического назначения с принципиально новым боевым оснащением, планирующим крылатым блоком, испытания которого также успешно завершены. Существенные результаты достигнуты в создании лазерного оружия. И это уже не просто теория или проекты, и даже не просто начало производства. 
С прошлого года в войска уже поступают боевые лазерные комплексы. So this is what the Russian president essentially has said, that the world will now have to take notice of what Russia is saying, what Russia is doing. The world has ignored Russia long enough, not anymore. He has weapons to conquer the world. He has weapons which, in his own words, are invincible. He has nuclear weapons, both underwater and ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, which can target any place, anywhere in the world, and will not be intercepted or detected by missile defense systems that America has installed. It's a provocation. Uh, that's how many in the West are seeing it. Remember, the NATO has called it Satan II. And uh, this comes at a very, very important time, as Julia Chapman just pointed out. This is just two and a half weeks before the presidential election, an election that, that uh, Vladimir Putin is expected to win comfortably. He has virtually no political challenger. And yet, this rhetoric, this positioning, this statement buttresses his tough leader image and that's something that every politician can use uh, let's look at the reactions uh, and washington america of course was was the target as many saw it of vladimir putin's speech so let's go straight to washington uh, we are on correspondent harry horton joining us from there good evening harry putin did not mince his words his message and his warning was very very clear it was directed largely at america has washington reacted to it yet Well, we haven't had any official reaction yet in Washington from either at the White House or the Pentagon, but I'm sure that U.S. officials here in the government will view uh, this new nuclear threat from Russia as being pretty credible. And the context of this uh, is that uh, last month the U.S. announced its own review of its nuclear capabilities. That followed a, a year-long uh, review ordered by the President Donald Trump. Uh, the President Donald Trump said a year ago that he wanted to see uh, a nuclear arsenal so strong and powerful that it would deter any acts of aggression. Uh, and this review that was carried out by the Pentagon was called the Nuclear Posture Review. Uh, and in that document, uh, it particularly highlighted the need for the U.S. to counter the strategic threats posed by Beijing and, and in particular Moscow. The document, and I'll quote from it now, said our strategy will ensure Russia understands that any use of nuclear weapons, however limited, uh, is unacceptable. So uh, the U.S. in the past month launching its own uh, enhanced uh, nuclear program uh, and Russia uh, seemingly responding to that uh, today with this announcement from Vladimir Putin. So certainly these enhanced nuclear capabilities on both sides, uh, I think, will raise tensions uh, in the world uh, about the state of nuclear weapons at the moment. Indeed. Uh, the NATO has called it Satan II. Russia claims that America's withdrawal from the treaty on anti-ballistic weapons forced Moscow to develop such nukes. How much water does that argument hold? Uh, well, look, I, 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 you know, within Washington, another one of the reasons for carrying out this uh, nuclear posture review uh, was the theory that Russia doesn't view uh, the U.S.'s nuclear capabilities at the moment as being very strong. So uh, this year-long review carried out by the Pentagon uh, and this, this big document that was uh, uh, launched showing that the U.S. was prepared to enhance its nuclear weapons was, uh, in effect, a message to Moscow to say, look, we are uh, uh, pretty capable of, of launching uh, a, a nuclear attack, so, so you need to watch out. So, look, uh, certainly uh, uh, clear that, that there are tensions between the two sides. I'm not sure whether we will get a reaction from President Donald Trump uh, in Washington uh, over the course of the uh, next 24 hours or so. Of course, he has responded to nuclear threats in the past before, uh, infamously, uh, of course, with Kim Jong-un of North Korea, where he boasted that the U.S.'s nuclear button was bigger than that of North Korea and the U.S.'s nuclear button worked. Uh, so uh, certainly it's within uh, the nature of Donald Trump to respond to these sorts of threats. But whether or not he'll be given the airtime uh, to uh, make that sort of announcement, we'll have to wait and see. Very quickly, and my final question to you, Harry. This comes even as the Russia meddling probe has picked pace in America. How do Americans see this posturing by Vladimir Putin? Is he still seen as Donald Trump's friend? Well, well, he's seen by uh, Americans in very different ways. I, you know, I, I think certainly the warm rhetoric that Donald Trump espouses about Vladimir Putin 
still continues to surprise people here in the United States. But then the military postures from the U.S. towards Russia have been very different. We saw that with this nuclear posture review, the U.S. specifically talking about the threat from Moscow. Uh, so, so we're seeing very different rhetoric from the president and from the White House uh, to what we're seeing from the U.S. military and the generals in the Pentagon. Harry Horton, thanks very much for joining us here from Washington. Uh <laughs>